Hi class, today I wanted to talk to you about another basic batch multiplication strategy, and that's for multiplying numbers by six. Okay. Um, if you remember from last week, I um, introduced or reviewed a strategy with you uh, to find basic facts multiplying them by five, and that was called the half ten strategy or uh, five is half of ten strategy. And so we're going to play off of that today to multiply uh, basic facts by six. And remember, this is just one strategy. It's not the only strategy. It's not the be-all, end-all strategy. So always keep that in mind that this may not be the best strategy for you, but it is a strategy to consider. And it might work for some of those uh, basic fact problems that you really struggle with. And one of, one of the, the biggest uh, basic facts that kids struggle with um, is 8 times 6 or in reverse 6 times 8. And so we can use the multiplying by 6 strategy called the half 10 plus 1 set strategy. And it is what it says in its title. Basically, we are going to multiply 8 times 5 because um, 5 is half of 10. And that's where that's playing off of. So 8 times 5 first. But we need to add one more set of 8 to that, okay? Because we just multiplied 8 times 6, and 8 times 6 is not 8 times 5. So in order for it to be equal to this side, we're going to have to add another set of 8 to that. So that in all, that we have um, 6 groups of 8. So really, technically, if you want to make this look... Um, uh, where you can find those six groups, think of it as eight times five plus eight times one because you have five groups of eight and one group of eight. And when you put them together, you get six groups of eight. And that's using that distributive property thinking, breaking apart your factors that we are so familiar with now um, doing in our class this year and last year and probably when you were in third grade. Um, so, um, Okay, I want to show you what it looks like in the model. I'm thinking about all the words I'm using, and I just don't feel like I'm making sense today. But it is what it is. This is week two of NTI, and the Monday, and it's just a new kind of thing for everybody. So I'm just trying to get my bearings and thinking about, oh, this, we're going to keep doing this after spring break. But it'll be five. Um, so eight times six is the same as eight times five plus another group of eight. So what that looks like here in our array, I'm going to kind of block it off to look more like the area model. Basically, we're finding 8 times 5 first. And we know that multiplying things by 5 is, is a lot more simple. And we can skip count by 5 pretty quickly and effectively. Um, so 8 times 5 is 40. So we have 40 of those little dots in that array inside there. And then we add one more set of 8. And we have 8 in there, okay? And when we put 40 plus 8 together, we get 48. So when you're thinking numerically, like in expression or equation form, 8 times 5 is 40 plus 8. That equals that 48 that we get for 8 times 6. And the reason we can do that is because of the distributive property of breaking apart those factors into smaller chunks that are easier for us to multiply and then adding them together. So that's the multiplying by six strategy. It works for larger numbers too, just like I talked about with multiplying by five and the double double strategy for multiplying by four and then the um, um, doubles plus one set for multiplying by three. You can actually use those same strategies when you're multiplying um, larger numbers by those factors as well. So if you wanted to multiply 247 times 6. You could really actually um, do the same strategy with that. It might not be the most efficient um, or the strategy you go to, but it still would work. So um, it's a really cool strategy. Let me show you one more. What's another sixes problem that lots of kids have faced? I guess 6 times 7 is another um, issue that sometimes kids face. Um, so if we were trying to find 6 times 7, we could use this half tens plus one set strategy and think of that as 5 times 7 
plus one more set of seven. Okay, so that we have that six times seven. Okay, so five times seven, if we skip count by five seven times, we get 35. And we add another seven to it. Now you've got to use those addition skills and those addition strategies. So 35 plus seven, you have the five and the seven, that's 12, and 12 and 30 make it 42. So 42 is your answer. If you want to think of it in terms of the area model, we have seven. We find 7 times 5 is 35. And we add one more set to that. We get 7 times 7 is 1. 35 and 7, that makes a 42. So that's um, the multiplying by 6 strategy. One of the strategies that you can use, you're not limited to that by any means. That is definitely something you can use. Um, I'm also going to try to post some of the Bridges posters that kind of outline um, the strategy a little bit more into like grid form that's uh, probably more age appropriate for third, fourth, and fifth graders. So hopefully I can link those pictures of those posters um, to these videos um, in the comments. So yeah, good luck with multiplying by six.